Hi, this is John again. Uh, this is my Element 14, the IoT in the Cloud Project 14 series of postings. Uh, this one here, I'm going to go through some stuff that I've done uh, to add some uh, features for my robot arm using the Arduino IoT Cloud. Uh, that's what I have here. Um, so this is the cloud. And uh, so this is a dashboard that they have where you can get to the uh, web editor, the getting started guide, and it kind of walks you through adding stuff. Uh, they have a project hub with some projects, device manager for adding devices, the store, and then our Arduino IoT cloud. Uh, so if we go to the device editor um, here, I've already added some boards. I got uh, two MKR1000s and an MKR Wi-Fi 1010. Uh, what I attempted to do was to have multiple boards connect at the same time, and I think there was somebody else had the same uh, posting. And uh, over here, I have a board. Oh, you're not seeing that because you don't have the camera. Um, let me go click that back on again. So way over here, there's a board. This is the MKR 1000 or 1010, uh, and that was going to be for a conveyor belt. It's sitting on a relay board. Then there's a DC motor and some other stuff. However, I can't connect two boards at the same time. Um, that's a limitation that they have. And then, uh, wait. And, and so I have one right here. So the MKR 1000 is uh, for the robot arm. Let me go bring that back up again. Doing things a little bit different. Uh, so that's running here. That's on a carrier board. It's running on an M MKR uh, to Uno carrier board. There's an MKR 1000 inside there, and then I have this Make uh, motor controller. It's an RC motor con R motor controller slash RC. See, it's based on the Wicked Devices uh, motor controller. I have it connected to multiple servos. Um, this is basically um, some joysticks that I could use for manually, but I'm not using those right now. They're not coded in. And uh, on the other side, there's one thing I did run into uh, with Shields. Uh, when you add a device in here, it wants to uh, enable the crypto device on the MKR device. And, uh, and it adds its keys, I guess. And uh, the problem is that's using I squared C. So if you have anything connected to SDA and SCL on the board, on the MKR, and in this case, the, the the motor controller did have something connected into that. It interferes with that. You can't configure it, can't add the device, or if you added the device and then you come back and put the motor controller on there, it won't boot. It'll keep failing for that. You won't see that, but uh, that I had to track that down, debug it, go through their code, get the code offline, start adding stuff, and then found out that it died at the crypto part. So don't have anything connected to those I guess when you're using this thing um, so get rid of that again so I've added my devices again you can only have one device you can only use one device at a time because you can only create one thing the thing is assigned to a particular device you can only have one device to one thing and then five properties um, so here you can add the, the Arduino boards and they tell you which ones they support and then the non Arduino boards and there's some Linux platforms up to boards, which should be the Intel. I don't know. I can't remember what Intel based boards they're talking about because that's kind of all they have. Um, and then the Raspberry Pi, the BeagleBone, and then uh, and then here you have the MKR 1300. So that's another MKR, but it's not part of the main line of devices that they support at this time. And uh, so let me go back over here. Um, and you can go to the editor and I'll go over to the cloud and here we see right uh, we got the cloud so I've added multiple properties uh, called this MKR LED only for the sake of uh, I started off with the LED and then uh, added all this other stuff and um, and so I have the LED I have a base which is the bottom I have a lower position, which is the lower arm in the upper position. And then I have this over here that runs a demo. And then if you go over here, you can see these the way they're set up. The value LED value is just set up as a Boolean. It's on off. And then it, it gets updated on change and it's rewritable. So pretty much all the other ones are that way too. 
and they have associated uh, methods that come with it. Oops. Um, and again, so you see if I go back here. Right, where do you go? Hmm. Yep, okay. So here it says you want to create a property. Well, you can only have one thing and you can only have five properties. I have five properties. So if you click on it, you'll get an error. It says that you can't create anymore. So yippee. Um, and then here, for some reason, I thought it was gonna take me somewhere else. Oh, well. Um, and so, let me see here. So this will just turn on LED, which you can't see because it it's underneath the, the controller board. And then from here, I can just change positions like a robot arm. I have some cheap servos, I guess. I need to figure that out because they're shaky. It's pretty shaky. There, there, there. See that? I'm running out of power. Uh, the lower position arm is a Metal Gear uh, servo, so it's a little bit better. And then the upper arm is another cheap one, so it has some shakiness to it. And then the run demo button here, right? I can click it and it'll basically just take the arm back and forth and then it'll get into a shakiness. And my intention is to eventually get it to where um, it'll run all these at the same time. So maybe get to like one position and then bring the arm down and do something and then bring it back up and then move to the other side. Just kind of a demo and then uh it'll do that and i can turn it off and then if i want to set this back i can just hit 90. It doesn't like 90 how it is so go there so there is that and then we can come back over here now if we click on the edit code this will take you to the online create editor Let's see if it loads. You can see some stuff. There it goes. And you need, they have a plugin that you run. That way it communicates with the Arduino. If you don't have the plugin, then it's not going to communicate. So I've created my own environment here. I have my code. Um, and uh, I, I have my own code I created for my robot arm. It's my own class that uh, for that. And then I can instantiate those and create them. And so I have uh, different instances of my robot arm for the different servos. And then I have an enum for my states. So I'm basically going through different states to determine whether it's a start. The start and stop are mainly for when I click the demo. Um, that was an issue I had because if we go to things property, this one it says read and write one second that doesn't do it so it's supposed to update every one second second when it's on at least that's what i thought um and it doesn't do that so if we go let me see if i go back here and go back to um here and i just realized i ran a demo i didn't show the robot arm i guess i'm going to do that again here okay so another thing is i don't know if i mentioned that earlier so I have my thing and it says new thing. You can only have one thing. So if you have a thing already and try to create a new thing, you'll get an error message. So right now they only support one thing. One thing, one board, five properties. That's all you get. Um, and so here's that run demo and it says every one second. So again, I thought that meant uh, that's what it was supposed to do. Cause if we click on it, and I posted this on their forum and then somebody pointed this out to me and I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Like, well, that's all it does. Well, that's what I thought it was going to do, but it doesn't. So whether you have it set to regularly or if you don't, kind of like my LED, it'll just update every time the thing changes states. So these two act the same. So that piece isn't working. And then uh, so we go back to the... Where are we? This one. And so I just just have the different code that I have here to, to run 
my different uh, pieces of it. Uh, there's some startup stuff. And there's another thing we ran into because uh, you have a monitor over here. And for some reason, anything, where is it? Yeah, anything before this, before the Arduino cloud begin, uh, you pretty much won't see these messages. So like this is basically worthless kind of. Um, so if you try to do some of your setup in this area, it's not gonna work. Um, so, so messing with this based on some suggestions as well, kind of made it, make sure everything was on the bottom of it. And then they also changed the formatting for the debug message. I was using one, there was an update. You don't get any message when there's an update. Um, you'll just run your code, it won't work, and then you have to go through that mess. Um, and I guess I'm supposed to be keeping an eye on the GitHub repository for updates. Um, and then all this other stuff, it typically won't show. So kind of have to put a delay while it's setting up uh, the Arduino cloud. And then you'll start seeing these messages. That's weird because I'm not doing anything. I don't know why it's moving. Um, and so, and then the loop is basically this. Actually, this code is a little different than actually what I'm running. So I guess I have to update this because there is something going on here. Um, so that is that part of it and go back to here. Oh, well, let me go back to the editor. The monitor window should show something. Like if I change position. Yeah, so it should show the position of the arm. So it should update. Yeah, so each one should update as it goes along. And so we have that. And again, I believe I ran that demo earlier without showing it. So let's get this thing back into place here. Bring this up. Yeah, so this position will change the base, so I can go back and forth and go that way. Uh, I can just type it in if I need to. Uh, this, no, I don't want to go that far. Oops, go back up. Yeah, so that arm is the Metal Gear uh, servo, so it's a little better than the other ones. These other ones are a bit shaky. I need to look at changing that maybe. We're go back there. Hey. Okay. And then I have my run demo here, which I can click and it should go off and do its thing. So it should just move around by itself. And basically right now it just goes back and forth, but eventually I'm hoping what it will do is yeah, run the other ones <clears throat> and then uh, go up and down and do something. And it gets really shaky sometimes. So that's always fun. And then I can shut it off. But somebody's buzzing. Yep, that one. Um, so that's pretty much it. I didn't do anything. Um, so we've got those, we got the editor, and here you can see all the messages that came through on the monitor. Uh, so this is like the serial output from Arduino uh, IDE. I'm not doing anything, dude, I don't know why I'm moving. And then uh, they got examples, and then, uh, yeah, the other problem I was having initially was when I added a tab, especially for .cpp, it wouldn't stay. So I'd add my code, save it, and do everything, and then I'd come back later and it'd be gone. So I had to keep adding it. So uh, there's an option here to download your sketch so you can save it as a zip file. And that's usually the best option to keep a backup of it. Um, and so that's pretty much what I have right now. And uh, I'll just keep banging away at this um, based on limitations that I have with it. I have to find another solution as far as talking between boards. I was either looking, uh, I might have to do something wired, maybe software serial or something like that. I can't use I squared C. 
So I have to try something else. But uh, yep, that's all I got.